So that is the original map that Lewis and Clark used on their adventure to uh, the Pacific Ocean. Look at the Hudson's Bay. For most of us that are geographically inclined, we know that's in Canada. Uh, this map shows it roughly in Montana. This is very similar to the map of the future economy that every person in here holds in their head. Raise your hand if you know exactly where your industry is going to be in five years. I'm just looking for the BSers in the room. <laughs> yeah. The maps that we were taught to deal with look a little bit more like this. The Oregon Trail map, now what's fundamentally different? There's a trail to follow, yeah? When you went to school, they said, hey, get a good education, get this degree, get the job, and then you'll be taken care of. We had some obvious expectations of the economy. And, and the thing about the medals and the belt buckles and the t-shirts, they're a lot like this peanut butter is to my dog, Kona. See the goofy grin right there? Money, a title, a corner office. These things, when you put them up in some front of somebody's face, they give you that goofy grin. But I'm here to talk to you about the problem with peanut butter. And the problem with peanut butter is that when you get here, the peanut butter doesn't matter anymore. Oh, man, why I had to do this? I just ate, I was comfortable, I found my spot. <laughs> the number two most important thing your brain is designed for is saving energy. It's the most efficient part of your body. It's using 20% of your body's energy, and at any given point, your brain is saying, let's not do any work. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what happened right there. Like, what did you experience? Notice I said, stand here for 10 seconds and just stare, right? Did I, did I say talk? <laughs> no, but what happened? And why did you talk? <laughs> Super uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, we look in and so your brain's number one, most important job above anything, it's, it's really the top 10 and then the efficiency comes after that, is to keep you safe. And see, over time, like, our vision is affected by age, maybe beer, coffee, other things, right? And, and while I didn't realize it, my vision had changed without me noticing. See, I thought it was just the signs, but it was actually me. But purpose works a lot the same way. See, over time, like, we start out thinking, I'm going to be the best astronaut, cowboy, millionaire ever, only to find out, like, I'm afraid of heights, I don't really like cows, and not very motivated with money. And so all of a sudden, my ability to see purpose becomes a little blurred. And, and so with vision, we sit down in front of the little gray machine, and they say, number one or number two. And you find out that each lens allows a little different view. And you can apply that to purpose, because like, if I create a lens that allows me to see a little further, well, there's two sides to feeding an elephant. We achieve a goal, it's on to the next one. Achieve a goal, it's on to the next one. And what we don't do is take the time after we've achieved a goal to say, what did I actually learn? What did I actually get out of this situation? What do I have now that I didn't have before that I could use maybe for something else in the future? We spent the next two months asking him things like, hey, what, what is it that you want to be when you grow up? Hey, what are you really good at? What do you like? What do you care about? And initially, his answers were, oh, I, 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 I don't know what I want. I know what I'm good at, and it's dealing drugs. Well, wait, tell me about this. Like, what did you do? Well, I had to, I had to, I had to you know, get good relationships with people, and I, I had to really hustle. I had to do, oh, you hustle, and you build relationships. That's, that's interesting. And oftentimes, we elude ourselves into thinking that our job is to get people to trust us to trust the information that we have, to trust that we know where the future is going to go. If you put yourself in that position, invariably you're going to be wrong. And that trust will break. Your job as an individual, your job as an HR person, your job as a coach to anybody is not to get them to trust you, but to set the stage so they can trust themselves. <laughs>